I'm Mylene Roach, editor of Designs and Machine Embroidery Magazine, and I'm here today to show you how to duplicate a very trendy, ready-to-wear item, which is the infinity scarf. You see them everywhere you go, and it's very simple to make. In fact, you can even use an old t-shirt. Just start at the base and cut, cut it up into strips all the way to the seam line of the shoulder to get the strip of fabric that you'll need to make the expanse of the scarf. Let me show you what I mean. Here, I have used fabric that I already purchased. Now, this is burnout cotton knit fabric, and this one is a printed four-way stretch knit. And this sample here is actually an open weave uh, woven fabric. Very nice, very delicate. I've paired the, those fabrics with a fabric that's called stretch mesh. Stretch mesh is something that maybe you've never looked at to wear on the outside, but you may have been wearing it in your undergarments for a long time. You'll find it in lingerie, the lining of bathing suits, in skatewear, and dancewear. It's very forgiving. This is a great project to start on if you're a beginning embroiderer because you get to play with editing at your embroidery machine and you're starting on a square of fabric. So placement is not crucial. And fit, well, an infinity scarf fits everyone. So let me show you what we need to do. First, I have started with my embroidery design. It's a border design right here. This one scallop, two scallop segments make up one design. And I've repeated it a number of times and then copied that whole set paste on this side and mirror imaged it horizontally so that I have two borders facing each other. And then I took another small flower and just sprinkled it down the center to fill that open area so it wouldn't be so blank. Once I have that set, it's time to hoop my fabric, which is my stretch mesh, and water-soluble stabilizer. Now I've selected the cloth type water soluble stabilizer because it gives a nice firm body for this large lace design, which is important. There's another type of water soluble stabilizer called, uh, well, it's a film type of stabilizer, and that's great for other applications. In this, it would be a little too weak to use. So use that stronger one. And we just want to smooth out our fabric, make sure it's nice and taut in the hoop. And when I hoop, I push that inner ring into the outer ring at the top of the hoop. Now, at this point, before I insert the inner ring down at the bottom, I can smooth and tug on my fabric, get it nice and flat, and then with the palm of my hand, insert it into the outer hoop. Tighten it up. Just hand tight it. You don't need a screwdriver. This is not anything that you need uh, assistance in tightening up. Okay, now I'm ready to go to the machine and stitch my design. Let's attach our hoop to the machine. One thing that you have to make sure you do when you attach your hoop to the machine is make sure the area behind the machine and the hoop is clear because this hoop is going to move all over. And then pull that excess fabric out from behind and underneath the hoop. You want to make sure it's all on top. I've already selected my embroidery design. And if you remember, I told you that I edited the design. So there's a, four different color stops in here. But I don't have to stop at each color. I can hit the monochromatic button, let it gray, and now it will stitch all the way to completion. Now, one of the great things about this lace design is that you don't have to change color. So once you press go, you literally can walk away from the machine and let it stitch, which is a really good thing because this design takes 77 minutes to stitch. We're not going to make you wait and watch all 77 minutes. We'll let this stitch just a little bit so you can see how the scallops develop. The first underlay stitches are laid down on that stretch mesh fabric, and then the decorative satin stitch covers those underlay stitches. And it will continue to fill this whole expanse of fabric. So, we'll let that begin, but meanwhile, I'll show you that I have actually cheated, and I've already started and com almost completed another hooping. So, I think we'll let this stop right where it is. I'll just hit stop cut my thread and I'll switch out hoops so that you can see how fast it does complete. Now when I do this, I'm going to have to advance to the stitch number that I stopped at. So if you do something like this at home, like if you get interrupted during a project, I advise to write down the stitch number of the design where you were when you stopped. That way, when you come back, you know exactly where you were. And I made a little cheat sheet, which is 39,000. So I'm going to advance through the design 
and I'll go by color first. And here I am on the last color and I need to advance over to 39,029. So this only takes a couple minutes. There we go. And this will stitch exactly where I left off. Lower the presser foot and off we go. And you can see it's just going to stitch one more flower and then I'll advance to one last flower and then we're done. It's really so easy. Embroidery is, you know, kind of mesmerizing. We often find ourselves sitting there just watching the machine stitch. It's also a great time to uh, walk away from the machine and maybe tidy up your sewing room, just keeping an eye on the hoop. Okay, now that our lace is done, let's take it out of the hoop. And I flip it over to the back side and I pull the stabilizer away and trim it here and here and along the edges, getting rid of all the excess. And then I just rinse it under warm water. You could soak it in a bowl. If you have hard water, you may want to use a water softener to um, let that water soluble stabilizer dissolve. Once it's gone, you have um, your lace. Now this still has a little bit of stabilizer in it. It's kind of stiff, which is a good thing when you're working on all these stretchy fabrics. So I'll leave that in for the sewing segment. And then once the garment is complete, the scarf is complete, then I completely rinse it away. I have pinned this to my 20 inch, or maybe it's uh, 15 inch, I guess it's 15 inches wide by the width of fabric. And I have um, pinned these two edges together. So we'll go over to the machine and sew it together. Now at this machine, uh, just touch the home button and go over to the sewing segment. And when I do that, it tells me that the carriage of the, of the embroidery unit is gonna move out of the way. And I'm just gonna remove that foot because I have to switch to a sewing foot. And once I do, then I'm all ready to sew. So if you'll just bear with me a second here. There we go. And then we take our other foot and slide that on. It's amazing the attachments that can go onto a machine today. I just love all the different tools that we have at our, um, at our hand to make these tricky techniques easy to perform. And so we'll just use the screwdriver to get that tightened up so it doesn't loosen while we're stitching. Okay, and now we'll sew. Right sides together. I usually use a half inch seam allowance on this. If you had a serger, you could most certainly use a serger, but I have learned that these, most, of this, um, is, most of the seam is completely invisible, so I don't even bother with the serger. And then we'll just sew. feeds through the machine. Now you can slow it down. I have this set at a pretty high speed here. I don't need to sew that fast. And I'm just feeding it through. Now these are, this is a knit fabric, so you would want to use a ballpoint needle, would be the best needle to use for this application. And that will let you pierce those, or sever, not actually, it doesn't even sever the yarns. What it does is just goes right between them. And you'll find that you won't stip, <laughs> skip stitches that way. Okay, we'll cut our thread. And now we want to fold this in half, long ways together. And I like to use clips for this. I'll go put one at each end and one in the middle and sew halfway, so all the way down that long strip. And once we have that complete, well then, close the infinity scarf. It's so easy to do this. And there's no wrong or right because, you know, fit is not a concern here. It's just a scarf, it's just a rectangle. Make, sh make sure that your raw edges are together as you travel along the seam. You can run at any speed that you're comfortable with. And the more comfortable you get with your machine, normally the faster you can go. And there's absolutely no harm in pausing the machine during sewing a seam so that you can get your materials, your raw edges, continue to be aligned. 
This is a nice long seam, so if you're even a beginner sewing, this is good practice on how to stitch a straight line. And if you don't stitch a straight line, nobody will know it anyway because it'll be inside out or right side out eventually and all of that seam allowance will be hidden. You'll notice that I use some clips. They make it so much easier to hold those two loosely woven ends together. Now you'll notice we're just about at the end. We're just about finished. And we'll cut our threads. And now it's time to turn. And we just insert your arm in this long tube, turn it right side out, which seems a little funny, but we have to close the tube. And if we do it right sides together, like we think we want to, then we won't be able to actually turn it. Now, if your stretch mesh has um, kind of stretched out of shape, then just go ahead and trim it into a straight line best to do this at a cutting table, not right at the machine. And then we take our seams and find the other end of the scarf. Now, infinity scarves usually have twists and turns in them. So if you have one in yours, no worries. It's supposed to be there. And this is where we'll use the clips again. And we pull this around. And you're going to sew as far as you can. You won't be able to get all the way around. And then at the end, you'll hand stitch this or top stitch it on the, on the machine. So I'll just finish this right here and then you'll be done. Now I do advise trying to sew this section where the lace is so that your top stitched area is not visible from the front of the scarf. That is the decorative area that you will want in the front of the scarf. And we're just sewing, meeting those raw edges as far as we can all the way around. We can stop, keep the needle down, and just pull a little bit more fabric and then cut. And then there's your scarf. On the back end, you would just top stitch that close and it's finished. Let's go take a look at the finished sample. And you can see the top stitching on that. Here on the back side is where I have actually gone and top stitched that closed. Nobody will ever see that. Oh yes, you could do it by hand, but you know, you'd like to be done today, I'm sure. Here's our finished samples. Aren't they beautiful? Pair them with a pretty t-shirt, a lovely dress, and you'll look great. You'll be trendy and on spot, and you made it yourself.